With the federal election looming, Australian voters are facing a taxing time, and as the election campaign unfolds, it's likely both sides are going to be aiming at our hip pockets. Malcolm Turnbull recently launched a campaign warning voters of the perils of Labor's policy to remove negative gearing for established properties, purchased after July next year, and also to halve the capital gains tax discount to 25%. He says that Labor's housing plan is going to be a sledgehammer on our property market as well as penalising mum and dad investors who use negative gearing to build their financial futures. Turnbull's intention is to convince those 67% of voters who already own their own home or are paying it off that Labor's plans to curb negative gearing will reduce the value of their homes, you know, their cash or their biggest asset. And on my reading of the effects of Labor's proposed tax reforms, he's right. On the other hand, it's Labor's task to convince Australians that a minority, those ugly greedy property investors, are distorting the housing markets and making it harder for first home buyers to enter the market. Labor plans to ban negative gearing for existing properties. It won't be retrospective though, those who already own properties that are negatively geared won't be affected. According to Labor, their proposal would boost housing supply, put downward pressure on house prices and help first home buyers enter the market. They also suggest these reforms will save $32 billion over the next decade for the budget. However, recent reports suggest that Labor is working on false economic models, ignoring warnings that their policy would push house prices down, hit economic growth and put 70,000 households into rental stress. In my mind, Labor's negative gearing policy will create a short-term property bubble with a tsunami of investors rushing into the market in the year before the new laws come into play. It's much like when they set a date for first homeowner grants to be completed. It brought forward demand followed by a slump in the first home buyer market. This time, it's likely that investors are going to get into the market in that year after the election, causing an inflation of house prices until the policy gets going and then lead to a decline of houses and to house prices in 2017. It's also going to direct investors to the wrong properties. Beginning investors are going to go to those new high-rise monoliths and to the new house and land packages in the outer suburbs and they're going to naively believe they're going to make good investments. Unfortunately, many are going to suffer the same fate that the majority of investors in these specific sub-markets have endured in the past. They're going to get low capital growth, no scarcity, lack of rental growth. But it gets worse when these investors try to sell their properties. And remember, in the past, up to 50% of investors needed to sell in the first five years after they bought a property, because they got it wrong. They're going to be selling second-hand properties, not new properties, and they're going to find the value of their properties have fallen significantly, because now only owner-occupiers, not investors, will be interested in them. Even worse, the young couple, the owner occupies next door in these new outer suburbs, they're going to find the value of their homes coming back because of all the other investor properties coming back on the market. It means that the homes they saved so hard for, fought so hard for, are going to drop in value. No one wins. Yes, houses are expensive in Australia, and sure, it's difficult for first home buyers to get into the market. By the way, there's nothing new about this. It's always been difficult for first home buyers to get into the market. And like all large international capital cities like London, New York, Paris, it seems to be getting more and more difficult for young families to buy close to the CBD or in the suburbs, in the inner suburbs of our capital cities. But the answer isn't to discriminate against those 7 million Australians who already own homes by lowering the value of their homes or to penalise those 1.8 million property investors who are taking a punt on securing their financial futures. If you want to understand how potential changes to the negative gearing laws may affect your investment property, why not have a chat with the team at Metropole? We're happy to sit down with you, see how your property portfolio is performing and discuss the implications. And if you're a beginner, again, we'd love to sit down with you and explain what those new changes, if they come into place, could mean to you.